What's going on, everybody? This is a segment from the Nerdgasm Talk podcast. If you like podcasts, well, why don't you come join us as the crew gets silly and Philly while we sit to talk about the latest in comics, games, movies, and all things pop culture. You guys can listen to our whole show on all the podcasts that we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you guys get your podcasts from. And make sure you guys also support the channel by subscribing to the Nerd Coalition Studios. And for the gaming needs, make sure you subscribe to Nerd Coalition level up this is the nerd coalition hope you guys enjoy the show and now feel the nerd dc decided they're going to take their 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 shot at a new documentary called the dc story right which is supposed (laughs) to be explaining over 75 years of the whole dc story from 1937 when superman first appeared to now and I was like it came out on hbo max i was like okay i'm really interested because i see some of the other oh it came out yeah. yeah, it came out on, on, on the twentieth. All right. Yeah, so I was going. I was going to check that because I was really curious. And I was like, okay, it was a three-part documentary. I've seen the Necessary Evil documentary. I've seen the Milestone documentary, which I recommend y'all go check that out. Also hosted, hosted, and played in by Method Man. So, uh, so I was like, I'm curious to check this thing out. And I watched it, and I'm like, okay. I'm into the first two parts, but I wasn't too a big of a fan of the third part. The third part was kind of a mess. Because I felt as though they rushed everything. And I was just like, okay. It's like we had to talk about everything, but we did, we gave no context to every, to anything at all. Especially in, the, in that third part. I was, I was liking where it was going. It, you know, uh, it talked about, you know, the... Uh, Jerry you know, you know, the, the the two guys that created Superman in the beginning, where their ideals came from, or why Superman was the way he was. And I was like, this is some interesting stuff, and how uh, Superman transcended the comics, and then we go into Batman, and how it, you know it, it created Batman, then Wonder Woman, and all that kind of stuff. Like that. I thought that was really good. Then when we go into like part two, we start going into how DC got corny, and how they had to uh, spice things up because. We, Marvel came in the picture and do a more real life based type of comics and things like that and then how we got the, the darker comics like Watchmen and V for Vendetta and the vertical comics and stuff like that and I was like okay this is this is pretty good and, you know the, the first black uh, DC you know, from the black lightning and things like that but then we get to the third part and then everything coming from they, they squished in Superman 78 you know uh all, all, all for Christopher Reed, all the way to twenty twenty three, and all the all the animated movies, all the regular movies, all the comics, all the new fifty two, everything. I try to imagine squeezing all that in one hour. The the third part felt like the mandated VEI presentations at work. Exactly. It was just like we got to talk about all the 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 representation and the the po- political. Um, implications and how things took a dive and now now we're where we at and I'm like why didn't we just make another part like this is y'all documentary yeah. on y'all streaming service, service. <laughs> like why did you just make another hour and me personally I'm sitting there thinking like okay I was sitting thinking in my head because why would you ever spend a minute and 12 seconds on the death of Superman which yeah, time. monumental to DC. Which rocked the DC core. You know, why would you spend two minutes talking about the new fifty two, which was the thing that helped reset this whole thing in emotion in the first place? How do we talk about uh Christopher Nolan's Batman but barely mention the Dark Knight? Yeah, we definitely did not they didn't get into any of that. And I was like, but how do we talk about the DCEU, and we don't even talk about Man of Steel. You know, those kind of things, or how that, you know, the, the, the animation adaptation of Death of Superman was probably, in my personal opinion, the best one. Has anybody seen that movie, by the way? The animated Death of Superman? Yeah, yeah I ain't talking about Superman Dooms, I'm talking about the Death of Superman, it's called. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. That thing is, that thing is. No, nah, I didn't see it. That thing is A1. It's not my favorite, but 
but it's good. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, that's I, is that the one with the uh, with uh, he, he he was trying to tell Lois his secret or something. God, I think that was also Superman, wasn't it? No, I'm, no, I, no, I think, think it's the death of Superman. From, he was like, I, from, from, I have a secret, and you and I love you, or something like that. I gotta go back. And, I really gotta go back and watch I it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to misquote it. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I, and, I think it's that one because he had like a he died with a card in his hand or something. Something stupid. We talk about we talk about milestone, but we don't give enough time to milestone. It's like, hey, milestones here. We need black superheroes. Move on. I was like, you ain't even gonna mention static. Like you just saw a picture. You ain't gonna mention icon. You're not gonna mention hardware. Uh, hardware. You're not gonna mention any any of these. You're not gonna talk about the change in Aquaman. You're not gonna talk. I was like, there's just so many things that happen in the '90s and the '80s, the '90s, and the. Uh, I thought they briefly mentioned the, Aquaman. Yeah, pretty briefly. And then, uh, and then at the end, they bring on Dwayne and talk about you know say. This is what uh, I always symbolized Black Adam when I was reading him as a comic. I said, "Let me stop you right there." No, he, did, he, did he say that, or he was just like, "I'm I only play people of like good moral standing or something like that." Something what, whatever, crazy the, he whatever, said, whatever. I was like, whatever the case Dwayne said, I was like, first of all, it's a lie. First of all, first of all, at your age when your dad was raised, you did not pick up no Black Adam comic. You know why? Because because <laughs> Black Adam ain't really had no comic like that to himself. Okay, you probably picked up a Shazam comic. Yep. I'm finding it hard to believe that he even did that. Okay, I'm about to say and, and realize that that this red motherfucker you're supposed to be in the movie with, I'm not gonna get into it right now. Yes, you are. You've already but, there. Crossed the but, <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, and how he just you know straight killed that thing. I was like, but you know, there need to be more talking heads. There need to be more things. So there's here's where I feel this though. I, now, as wrestling fans on here, do you remember the documentary The Money Night War? Yes. Which I think was probably mm-hmm. one of the best documentaries they ever did. Next to like the depth of the, the rise and fall of ECW. I was about to say that one. Yeah, Go right ahead. I, I felt as though that that was probably one because it took before Jordan even did it with the Last Dance. They they took uh, each episode focused on something from the Attitude Era to break it down in full. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being about tw- twenty episode, 10 or 20 episodes. Even when mm-hmm. uh, on Hulu they did, you know, uh, the rise of the, the Lakers dynasty. It's a 10 episode documentary. Mm-hmm. Each episode being an hour without commercials. Standing with the last days. And even with certain other documentaries, it's like the, we got Three parts or four parts. I'm sitting there thinking, like, well, why? With so much stuff with DC, why do you take about ten episodes to fully break every other stuff down to help teach people about that? Because you gotta brush over it. So for casual fans like like my wife who's who's trying to watch it with me can be more engaged to to, you know to talk about it. Well, let me ask you this: Do you feel that maybe DC felt that I I don't want to the wrong thing to say is that they don't need to focus but it would have been too much content to focus on all these parts because like you said you mentioned icon any uh, a dc fan knows icon could get a whole hour by himself no okay well see it's funny you say that too because w- what i did was i <laughs> took like if i was on a documentary i broke it down to 10 parts Mm-hmm. Of, of, fancy. of what I feel as though how they how they should focus it on each thing I'm going to say they talked about but they didn't talk about much in detail unless it was like the first episode uh-huh. so I, I have it like this because I, I look at it like this I have I said this is called my DC story chapters the first chapter first of all the first three episodes should be about the should be about the Trinity episode one is Superman episode two is Batman episode three is Wonder Woman get the get the Trinity out the way. You got to talk about them. You got to talk about them in full because that's what's been carrying DC Comics for all these years. Whether people want to believe it or not. Everybody celebrating the 75th anniversary, there's a reason for that. Okay? And you got you got to celebrate the, the like, with Superman and where he came from. And you got to talk about uh, how he became in the media 
and then how they, th they thought the, the character was corny. Then you got to bring it to the big screen. You talk about the movies, and then you talk about the death of Superman, how it, it just just rocked the DC universe. And talk about the changes that people have made in Man of Steel with Zack Snyder's Superman, his version of Superman, and, and why people was upset about that. Then you do the same thing with Batman, how they talked about how, how Batman came in the fold, Robin came in the fold, talk about, you know, the 1966 Batman Cartier, how they was, you know, making a parody of Batman, and how they, they made Batman go dark in 1989, but then how he went silly again, and Batman and Robin, and then Christopher Nolan comes in, and then who... Christopher Nolan rocked the DC movie universe because they had to be serious after that. Talk about it. Same thing with goes to Wonder Woman. You know, talk about her, her inspiration, her TV show, her movies, all that stuff. Those should get the, the, the other thing. Next episode should be Crisis on Infinite Earths. The thing that was supposed to spice up the DC universe in the first place. When they had when they made when they made one universe. They, they, they talked about it, but I thought like you can go into more detail why they, they needed to do that. Then the next episode or it's not in order. You should have a versus Marvel episode. In in the Monday Night Wars, they had a This is Extreme episode, which focused on ECW and the threat the ECW had on on both WCW and WWF in the Monday Night Wars. Mm -hmm. You should have a show with Marvel on what Marvel was, what it took from DC, and how Marvel was a threat to DC in the sixties. Focus all on that. Then you go to uh, comics get dark. Talk about Watchmen. Talk about Vertigo. And with the vertical comics, I was like, okay, they mentioned V for Vendetta, but I was like, but for maybe Lady Sketch who doesn't know, and I'm not saying that as a, a thing like that, but like, we ain't talk about Red, we ain't talk about The Losers, those are all vertical comics that, that were turned into movies that a lot of people don't know, and it's like, wait, DC was a part of this? Yeah, because it's part of mm -hmm. vertical comics. And by the way, I enjoy Red. I like V for Vendetta, I know that's not your It's name. not my favorite, but yeah. And, and I enjoyed the loser. <laughs> Have y'all seen the uh, losers? Yeah, I saw the losers. Yeah, so I enjoyed the losers. Then I I would have um, Milestone Media, just like they, Milestone Media had their own documentary already. So, but you can sit there and focus, put put uh, to our Milestone Media and talk about <laughs> African Americans going into comics, especially on the DC side of things. And how Maso Media came up and talked about, you know, uh, Dwayne McDuffie and all of them. You, you, you got you to flush that story out a little bit. Then you can talk about DC TV. How do we talk about, in the regular documentary, we, we talked about the TV barely, but we don't even mention Smallville. We don't mention uh, the, the Flash series from the night, with good or bad. We don't even talk about the Lois and Clark. We don't talk about none of the TV shows that came there and failed. And it's like, okay, well, we, we do a Smallville because then Arrow spun off of Smallville. They didn't use the same actor, but they kept talking about the Arrow voice. I'm like, you know, it started with Smallville. <laughs> then after that, I would do uh, talk about the DC movies, go, talk about going into DCU. Start from Christopher Reed, going all the way down to uh, past Christopher Nolan, Joe Schumacher, Christopher Nolan, and going into Zack Snyder. Then I would see like that would go into too dark. The reason a lot of people have problems with DC is because how dark it has gotten. Talk about the, you know the fan backlash of what DC is supposed to represent and why it has gotten too dark. And is it, it, was that a mistake or was it not? I want to hear those talking heads' opinions about that because DC got gets dark in the comics too. Y'all read some Killing Joke is being one of them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know you know uh, a lot of comics get like real, shit Kingdom Come. Which is one is one of my favorite graphic novels, but Kingdom Come gets uh very dark. Then I then it's like then I have an episode called "I Want to See Myself," a diversity episode, talking about from Hispanics, Asians, women, African Americans, all this stuff that how we have loaded into the comics and we have taken on different roles of different superheroes that we didn't do back in the day. I will see that and then f finish it off with the new 52 and this tomorrow version also that we're doing currently now and why that was a necessary change for the stuff. I was like, that 10 part series with all the talking, because they got 
the talk of his in there. They got Zachary Levi. They got Gail Godot. You know, so you could have, uh, they got Dwayne Johnson's shit. You know what I'm saying? So, they got the big talk of his. Y'all could have had that. And I'm like, if y'all had did that and just branched it out some more, they would have been a complete nerdgasm. But in the meantime, right now, it gets like a, a very low hashtag, give it a chance. In my personal opinion. So if y'all a DC fan or a comic book fan, you know I recommend y'all go check that thing out. I Man, I recommend you call DC and just like listen to this rant because <laughs> <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> I mean, because I honestly feel like even just another hour could have benefited from like the the about the documentary could have benefited from just one more, even just one more hour. The way you work it, that was very thorough. Yeah, but I feel like the one thing I don't like about docu series or mm. episodic documentaries, if you set a tone and don't keep the same tone. So if the first episode was we just took a block of years and kind of rushed through everything, yeah, I'm gonna expect that in the last two episodes. Right? Yeah. I don't know how it got from we get we're very thorough on the first one thorough on the second one and then the third one just throw everything in there and shake it up and and put it out yeah it didn't feel like it didn't have the same tone as the rest of the documentary exactly i just i feel like that's not i hate when people do that you keep the same energy through the whole the doc- show the series, yeah so that's why I say if it was just even if we just had four parts and you didn't break it up because I do think that they feel like folks is burned out on DC. Right? I think that's exactly what it is also. So they may not stick around for ten episodes, but mm-hmm. at least flesh out what you got. Mm-hmm. I, there was enough information packed in that third one that you could have expounded a bit more and gave us another one. 